everyone. Today I wanted to share some of my thoughts on a book I read and really enjoyed recently, and it is The City and the City by China Mieville. This is my first full Mieville read. I did try to read his book all about the Russian Revolution that was published last year and found myself getting lost in it. Uh, I think my mistake there was that I tried to listen to it on audio, and there were so many political figures and names and organizations and movements that I was not super familiar with and couldn't keep track of like I would on a page, so I found myself very lost in that narrative, despite how much I wanted to like it, so I figured I should give his fiction a try. I actually purchased this about a year ago when I was in London. It was one of the titles that was more familiar to me, and it was much less daunting in terms of size than a lot of other works by Mieville. So I sort of arbitrarily picked The City in the City and then let it stay on my shelves unread for this past year because I honestly didn't know much about what it was actually about. And I enjoy going into a book blind as much as the next person, but because this is not an actively hyped book on booktube, I didn't have a lot of momentum or motivation to get to it over other things that I have on my shelves, so I just kind of let it sit because I didn't know what it was about. And not having any active recommendations in my mind either, I didn't feel like I had any immediate reason to get to it. I never felt the pull. So when I recently started going through my shelves and reading the first chapters out of different books, trying to assess whether or not I want to even keep them on my shelves, the first chapter of this captivated me so, so much and it ended up being the next thing that I read. It's a book that really sunk its claws into me right away from the get, and then it's one that I just could not ignore. I had to see it through to completion. And a lot of the fun of this book was going into it completely blind and having no uh, preconceptions or expectations for the story, where it was going to go, or the setting in which it takes place. And the setting is the most unique aspect to this narrative, so if you are interested in going into it relatively blind, I would just wholeheartedly recommend it if you're looking for a sort of weird and unconventional mystery novel. That is sort of my, my quickest possible pitch while giving the least amount of information away. But if you wanted to know a little bit more about what this book actually is about, the novel focuses on a detective named Chiador Borlu, and he lives in an unnamed Eastern European country. It's never given a specific geographic location or, or specific country, but you're given a sense based on names and details that it probably takes place somewhere around there. He is a detective. In the opening chapters, there's a body found. And while a lot of the detectives initially write it off as the death of a sex worker, um, and therefore, you know, pretty cut and dry, one of the female detectives on the scene, who happens to know the area a lot better than her male counterparts, says that she doesn't think that this is a sex worker killing. She doesn't look like a sex worker, um, just based on the way that she presents herself, um, and her face has been mutilated, which is indicative of something more sinister than just an unsatisfied customer. From the start, and that was the first chapter, it seems like it's a relatively straightforward story, but the end of the first chapter is that thing that really got its hooks into me, and that's Tidor, our protagonist. He spots a woman across the street, they make eye contact, and then they have to pretend like they didn't see each other, um, and he was not supposed to have noticed her. And it's a really awkward moment, and it's not really clear what happened, but you have this feeling like someone made a mistake or something wrong happened, something uncomfortable. And then the story unfolds from there, from Tidora's perspective, investigating this case, and it becomes complicated because the like I said before, the location of the book is the most interesting part. Um, there are two cities that they occupy the same physical space. They might have some different streets, but these streets occasionally will cross over and intersect. So therefore traffic from these two cities is running uh, are running on the same streets. Um, buildings may belong to one city or another that are side by side, and sometimes these barriers aren't even necessarily clear or outwardly apparent. And the laws of these two cities, they have agreed, is that they have to pretend like they're separate entities. So you're not allowed to see people from the other city while you're in your city. The cities are called Bazel and Okoma, and they are completely separate places. They have different rituals, customs. People in the cities will wear different colors to help differentiate themselves and distinguish themselves from citizens of the other city. If you want to have Elkoman food in Bazel, you have to go to a restaurant in Bazel that has Elkoman food and vice versa. And there is a governing body that is kind of in the shadows, but is always watching. 
waiting for people to make mistakes and to to what they call breach and there are punishments for breaching so if you acknowledge someone in Elkoma and you are a citizen of Bazel, you can be punished for that and of course this makes life very complicated because you have to literally look away from people in your same space and traffic obviously is complicated because there are cars from two different countries on the same road and so therefore their traffic laws have to be kind of the same and speed limits from one street to the next have to be sort of similar so that major accidents are less likely to happen even though technically you're supposed to not be able to see the cars in the other city i'm sure china miebel explains this much better than i do in fact i know he does for sure but that's the most compelling thing is I felt like he had thought of everything. Um, he brought up little things about what would complicate this way of life that I would have never considered. Like being a child and growing up in one of these cities and how that will affect your perception of others and mistakes you might make before you know the rules of breach. And it just is so, so interesting. So that to me was the most compelling part. And it's complicated because the two cities are, are forced to work together in order to solve this murder. That's all I'll say about that because I don't want to give too much away about the plot, but it just goes deeper and deeper and becomes more complicated and, and fascinating. And I just so, so loved the way that he was able to achieve this because this is not very long of a book. It's about 360 pages and he's able to fully build this world um, with laws and customs and rules and beliefs so different from what we consider to be normal and he is able to normalize it and help you make sense of these cities. Strange and interesting and difficult it would be to cohabitate like this because you're not really cohabitating. And it also is, I think, by its very nature, very openly political. Not too far into the book, I was immediately forced to think about like the Israeli-Palestine conflict and how it's not exactly the same, obviously, but they both have claims to the same physical space. and how to reconcile that problem. And while it was perhaps not the most perfect metaphor, I thought it was very thought provoking um, and just a concept unlike anything else that I've ever thought of before. So I would highly recommend this to those who really enjoy mystery novels first and foremost, because I didn't really know it was a murder mystery going in. So that was a nice surprise because this is typically a thing that I would consume on audio and I really enjoyed the experience of reading it physically. But I do think that it would work well as an audiobook. And in fact, I know Max from Well Done Books read and reviewed this a couple of years ago and, and he consumed it on audio and really enjoyed that experience. So that might be right for you. I just think I really appreciated having this in print. Definitely one for mystery lovers, especially because this one doesn't get too graphic into in terms of details. It's much more about the mystery and the sort of process to see details of solving the mystery, especially when it's going over international borders and the way that it's complicated and because of the border crossing, but also because these borders exist on top of each other, which just makes it all the more complicated and really interesting and unique. I really enjoyed that facet. You just have to, I think, be willing to suspend your disbelief a little bit in order to, to really believe this city was real. For me, it was not an effort at all, but if you think about it really, really hard, it might be difficult to reconcile that with what we know about reality and how things actually work. Um, but for me, it did not require much suspension of disbelief to achieve that. So in a lot of ways, the city in the city was like everything that I expected it to be and nothing I expected it to be. Um, I know I'd heard people throw out words like Ch Chinese Mabel is weird and it's speculative and it's strange and it kind of toes the line of genre. But I didn't really fully understand what those words meant in the context of his writing because those descriptors to me really bring to mind authors like David Mitchell, who I feel like confident could write very effectively in any genre and even cross genres like he did in things like Cloud Atlas or Number Nine Dream. So I suppose conceptually you could think of Chinese Mabel much like you could think of David Mitchell, but I think stylistically and in terms of their ideas, they're very different, but also quite successful. And much like I felt after I read my first David Mitchell, I feel really confident in letting China Miebel take me wherever he wants to go and experimenting with whatever genres he's willing to try. I don't know what to read next by him because he has such an extensive back catalog of works and I expect that they all tow the lines of different genres in different patterns, and I'm really eager to see what that's like. So if you have recommendations on other China Mieville that I can read next, ones that you'd recommend after The City in the City, I would love to be pointed in that direction because this was surprising and fresh and unique. It was unlike any other thing that I've ever read before, which is always a fun thing to encounter, and I did not 
know what to expect out of this book. It just kept getting more twisty, more complicated, and, and more deep. Those are all things that I love in a book. I was captivated from start to finish, and I would highly recommend this. This is undoubtedly one of the best books that I, I've read this year so far. I think it will most certainly be on my best books of 2018 list at the end of the year. If you like mysteries and you're willing to deal with a little bit of strangeness, but it doesn't feel like science fiction or fantasy, the best word I have for it, I guess, is speculative, because this is something that could completely happen in the real world. There's no magic happening. There's no interdimensionality or anything. This is all happening in our world with our rules and constraints. It just is a very interesting what if story, which I guess is for me how I best define speculative fiction. So I would highly, highly recommend this. I would love to hear more people talk about Mieville because I hear his name talked about a little bit here and there, but never in any kind of detail or specifics. So like I said, I would love to know where to go next with his work and I would love for more people to pick this up and talk about it because there's so much going on here. I've only really scratched the surface of this book. Down in the comments, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the city in the city, uh, recommendations for me or anything else that you have to say. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.